Today we're going to be learning about solving equations with exponents. We're going to start off by looking at some powers that you should already know that we have dealt with in past lessons. I'm just going to make this big so you can see it. Okay, so these are just exponents that we have, powers that we have worked with before, that I have mentioned before that many of these are ones that you should know by now off by heart so that you don't have to use your calculator to try and work it out and that's going to be coming in handy while we are doing this section as well so if you haven't got the the worksheet that goes with this lesson you can pause the video and take these down quickly okay so now we are going to go and use those to help us to solve equations so let's have a look at our first type of equation we're going to be doing which is equations which have an unknown exponent okay so here's an example of an equation with an unknown exponent you can see over here in my equation i've got 2 to the power of x minus 4 minus 3 equal to 5 okay so when we have an equation like this, there are a few steps that we need to follow. The very first thing we need to do, just like with a normal equation, is we need to move things around so that we only have our unknown things, so our x in this case, on one side of the equation and everything else must be on the other side. So over here, you look at the terms and you see, does a term have an unknown in it? And if it doesn't, then you can move it to the right hand side if it does you want it on the left hand side so in this case over here that has got an unknown in the exponent it's got x we want to get rid of the minus three so we're going to add three to get rid of it and then we must add three on the other side as well so that's going to give us two to the power of x minus four equals five plus three which is two to the power of x minus four equals 8. Okay, so once you've done that, once you've got rid of anything that isn't supposed to be on this side with your unknowns, or if you had any unknowns on that side, you would need to move them as well. So you want your unknowns or your x's to be on the left-hand side, you want your constants to be on the right-hand side. Once you've got it to look something like this, you need to make sure that you have simplified it. So I simplified the 5 plus 3, that gave me 8. Okay, once I've done that, my next step is I need to try and make sure that I have powers on both sides that have the same base. So if I look at this power that I've got over here, which was given to me, it has a base of 2. So I need to try and make sure that this has got the same base as what I've got on the left-hand side over here. So let's see in the number 8, if I can write the number 8 as 2 to the power of something, because I want it to have a base of 2. So you should know that 8 is the same as 2 to the power of 3 or 2 cubed okay so that is going to I'm going to change that now like that so my goal over here is to make sure I have the same base because as soon as I've got the same base if I've got 2 to the power of something equal to 2 to the power of something then those exponents should be equal to each other because the bases are identical so now I can say therefore x minus 4 equals 3. So my first step that I need to do is I need to move things that don't belong on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. I want my exponent or I want my variables on the left-hand side and I want my constants to be on the right-hand side and I simplify. Then I need to make the bases the same. Once I've made the bases the same, I can then drop the bases. Okay, so please take note over here, I had one power on the left-hand side equal to one power on the right-hand side, and there was nothing else there. It wasn't something multiplied by the power or anything like that. It was just the power equal to another power. So once I've got that, if I have the same base, I can then drop the bases. Right, now that I've dropped the bases, I just then I'm going to finish solving like I normally would solve any other equation. So I've got x minus 4 equals a 3. I want to get rid of that 4 over here, so I'm going to add 4 on both sides. So then I'm going to say x equals 3 plus 4. So therefore, x must be equal to 7. Okay, so now, just like any other equation, once you've got your uh, solution over here, you can check it. You can say, well, if x is 7, that means I have 2 to the power of 7 minus 4, which is 3. So 2 to the power of 3. Now we know that 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Minus 3 gives me 5, which is the same as what I have on my right hand side. So you can check your answer and you can see if you got it right. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some that you're going to do for yourself. This first one, 
This shouldn't take long. This is just to get you warmed up. I'm just going to give you a few seconds to work on this. So copy it down and then see if you can work out what x is equal to. Okay, you should be done. So let's go through that quickly. So for question A, we have 3 to the power of x equals 3 to the power of 5. Now, in this case, you've already been given one power equal to another power, and they both have the same base. So we can go straight on to this step over here. That has been done for us. All we need to do is drop the bases and make the exponents equal to each other. So now I know that x is equal to 5, and there's no other solving that I need to do, so I am finished with that one. So that was question A. That was just to get you warmed up. So now let's have a look at question B. So for question B, you have got 5 to the power of 2x minus 7 equal to 125. I'm going to give you one minute to work on this question. Okay, so let's go through that. So in this equation, we didn't have anything that we need to move around. There are, there's only one power on the left-hand side. There's no other terms or anything. And on the right-hand side, I've got a single number that I can change to a power straight away. If you look over here, the base that I want to have is 5 because I've got a base of 5 on the left-hand side. So I'm going to try and make that have a base of 5. Now, you should know that 125 is the same as 5 cubed. So this is going to be... 5 to the power of 2x minus 7 equals 5 cubed. Now that I've got the same bases, I can go and drop those bases and I can make the exponents equal to each other. So then I can say, therefore, 2x minus 7 is equal to 3. Once I've done that, I can then finish solving as normal. So I'm going to, I want all my x's on the left hand side, so I want to get rid of anything that is a constant. So I'm going to get rid of this negative 7 by adding 7 on both sides. So I've got 2x equal to 3 plus 7. That gives me 2x equals 10. So then I can solve and say therefore x is equal to 5. So that's what you should have got for question B. Now we're going to go on to question C. Okay, once again I'm going to give you one minute to solve this equation. Okay, so let's do that one now. So in this example, we had 4 to the power of x minus 5 plus 7 equals 23. So the first thing we have to do is we have to get rid of this plus 7. I want to have just this term on its own on the left-hand side of my equation. So I need to get rid of that plus 7 by minusing 7 on both sides. That gives me 4 to the power of x minus 5 equals 20, 23 minus 7. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify that. 4 to the power of x minus 5 equals 23 minus 7 is 16. Okay, so once I've got to that stage, I can then go and do the step where I try and have make powers on both sides where I have the bases that are the same. So the base over here is 4. So let's see if we can get a base over here that is also 4. 16 is the same as 4 to the power of 2. So that means I can write this like this. 4 to the power of x minus 5 equals 4 squared. Okay, so now because I've got the same bases, I can now drop those bases and I can make the exponents equal to each other. So then I can say therefore x minus 5 is equal to 2 and now I can finish solving by taking this 5, getting rid of it, by adding on both sides. So I have x equals 2 plus 5, so therefore x is equal to 7. So that's what you should have got for question C. Right, now question D. Okay, so for this one you need to be careful. You've got something that you're going to have to do over here using your laws of exponents that we have already learned. So see what you can do with that one. I'm going to give you one minute to try it again. Okay, so let's see what you did. So in this question, I have got two powers on the left-hand side equal to a power on the right-hand side, and all of them have got a base of two. So I'm not going to have to worry about changing anything with the bases or anything, but what I do need to do is remember we said, I said we need to have one power on the left equal to one power on the right. So what I need to do over here is I need to combine these into one power. I can do that because they have the same base, and we've got a law that says when you're multiplying powers with the same base, what do we do with the exponents? We add the exponents. So I'm going to add those exponents and keep the base the same. So that's going to give me 2 to the power of x plus 5 equals 2 to the power of 8. Now that I've got that, I can then go and continue like I was doing with my other ones. I've got already a power equal to a power. They both have the same base, so I can drop the bases and make the exponents equal to each other. So I can say, therefore, x plus 5 must be equal to 8, which means I can now solve for x by taking that 5, getting rid of it, by subtracting on both sides. So now I can say x equals 8 minus 5, so therefore x is equal to 3. So that's what you should have got for question D. Right, question E. Over here, I'm going to give you one minute again to try this one. Be careful with this one. There is something extra that you're going to have to do. See if you can figure out what it is. So you have one minute to solve this equation. Okay, so let's see what you did. So for question E, we've got 2 times 5 to the power of x equals 50. Okay, so now with this one, you need to recognize that 2 and 5 
are not the same, so we can't combine them into one power like we could over here, okay? Also, if you look at the 50, I can't write 50 as a power. It's not a perfect square, it's not a perfect cube, nothing like that. But what I can do is I can take this 5 to the power of x and say if I've got 2 times 5 to the power of x, I can get rid of that 2. Remember, the inverse of multiplication is division. So if I had an equation like this, 2x equals 50, what would I do? I would divide both sides by 2 and I'd say therefore x equals 25. I'm going to use the same concept over here and I say I've got 2 times something that I want to get on its own equal to 50. So what am I going to, do, going to do? I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So that gives me 5 to the power of x equals 50 divided by 2 which is 25. Now I can continue because 25 I can write as 5 to the power of something. 25 is 5 to the power of 2. So now I can say 5 to the power of x equals 5 to the power of 2, which means that x must be equal to 2. So that's what you should have got for question E. Then question F, over here you've got 4 to the power of x equals 32. Now again, this is one that you guys have to think about very carefully. I've, I'm going to give you one minute to try and solve this equation. Okay, so let's go through that example. So in this one, you have to be careful because 4 to the power of x equals 32 is actually deceptively difficult. You need to realize that 32 cannot be made 4 to the power of anything. 32 is 2 to the power of 5. It's not 4 to the power of anything. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to change this base as well. So let's just have a look and see. We've got 4 to the power of x equals 32, which is 2 to the power of 5. That is the only thing I can change 32 to. It's the only power I can change 32 to. So what I need to do now is I, I need to see, well, I can't make this one have the same base as that. So can I make this one have the same base as that? I can. 4 is the same as 2 squared. So this I can change to 2 squared to the power of x equals 2 to the power of 5. Now over here we are going to be using the law that we have learned before which is raising a power to a power where we know if we raise a power to a power we have to multiply the exponents. So if I multiply 2 and x that's going to give me 2x. So this is 2 to the power of 2x equals 2 to the power of 5. Once you've got that we now have the same base, we can drop the base and make the exponents equal to each other. So therefore, 2x equals 5. And now I can solve for x. And when I solve for x, I'm going to divide by 2. And when I divide by 2, I'm not going to be able to simplify that. So that's going to be x equals a fraction 5 over 2, which can't be simplified. So that is how it's going to stay. Therefore, x is equal to 5 over 2. So that's what you should have got for question f. Be aware, sometimes you might need to change the base of the power that has the unknown. Sometimes you can't make this base the same as that, but you can make this base the same as that. Okay, so that's what you had to do for question F. Now let's have a look at the last two questions in this activity. Okay, so these two over here, they are using... Let me just go back quickly to this slide over here. So you can see anything, anytime you've got a power equal to 1, remember that your exponent is going to be 0. So you're going to be using that concept. You're also going to be using the concept that if you have a, an exponent of 1, then the number stays the same. 
So over here in these two examples, we've got over here 7 to the power of x equal to 1. So uh, that one won't be long if you know how to do how to do it. And then over here you've got 8 to the power of 2x plus 3 equal to 8. Again, it won't take long so long as you know how to do it. So I'm going to give you one minute to complete both of those equations. Okay, so let's see how you do with those two questions. So for question G, we had 7 to the power of x equals 1. So remember, any time you've got 1, it can be written as anything to the power of 0, because anything to the power of 0 will always be equal to 1, except for 0 to the power, to the power of 0, which you can't do. Okay, but I don't need to worry about that. So over here, I need to have a base of 7. So if I've got it equal to 1, I can make, remember, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So I can make my base 7 and just have a power of 0. So this is going to be 7 to the power of x equals 7 to the power of 0. So therefore, when I drop my bases, which are not the same, that gives me x equals 0. And I don't need to do anything else there. Then the last question, question h, we have 8 to the power of 2x plus 3 equals 8. If they are both, if the base over here is the same as that number, it means that the exponent can just be 1. So I can write this as h to the power of 2x plus 3 equals 8 to the power of 1. Okay, please note that this is not to the power of 0, it is to the power of 1. If it's the power of 0, it would be equal to 1. Okay, so over here, a to the power of 2x plus 3 equals a to the power of 1. They have the same base, so now I can drop the base and I can make the exponents equal to each other. So that gives me 2x plus 3 equals 1. And now I'm just going to go and solve, take that plus 3, subtract on both sides. So that gives me 2x equals 1 minus 3, which is 2x equals negative 2. So therefore, x is equal to, if I divide by 2 on both sides, I get negative 1. So that's what you should have got for question h. Okay, so all of these equations we've done so far have been equations where we had an unknown exponent or an unknown in the exponent, okay? And we were solving, we would make the bases the same and then drop the bases and make and solve the new equation that forms with the exponents equal to each other. Now we're going to go on to equations which are the other way around. So now we're going to be solving equations where the unknown is in the base and we need to work out what the unknown is where we've got exponents that we're going to have to deal with as well. Okay, so in the first example, we've got over here, x minus 5 to the power of 4. Okay, so x minus 5 to the power of 4. Minus 7 equals 9. Okay, so the first thing I need to do over here is just like we had to do in the previous one, anything that doesn't have the variable in it needs to move, okay? We need to get rid of it. So I don't want this minus seven to be over here. So I want to get rid of it by adding seven on both sides. This whole thing is going to stay as it is. The x, the unknown, is part of the base of that power. So this power is going to stay together as a power. I'm not going to split anything up there at the moment. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about the fact that there's more than one term inside there. That's not a problem. I just need to get rid of anything else that is not attached to that. So I've got the minus 7 I need to get rid of. So this is going to be x minus 5 to the power of 4 equals 9 plus 7 because I'm adding 7 on both sides to get rid of that minus 7 over there. And that gives me x minus 5 to the power of 4 
equals 9 plus 7 is 16. Okay, now just like we had to do in the previous kind, we now need to change this to a power. But now I don't know what my base is supposed to be. In the previous ones, I had a base and I didn't know what the exponent was. So I had to try and make the bases the same. Now, I don't know what the base is, but I do know what the exponent is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the exponents the same. So if I've got an exponent over here, which is 4, I need to get an exponent over here, which is also 4. So now what I need to do is I need to see 16. Can that be written as anything to the power of 4? And what can I make my base to the power of 4? So I've got x minus 5 to the power of 4, and I need to get something to the power of 4. Now, 2 to the power of 4 is going to give me 16. But there's something else that can also be to the power of 4, which will also give me 16, and that is negative 2. Now, I didn't have to worry about this in the previous kind because I knew what the base was supposed to be. But here, I don't know what the base is supposed to be. It can be, I have to take into account every possible base that I could have. And every possible base means that I have to include the positive and the negative 2. Because positive 2 to the power of 4 is 16. And negative 2 to the power of 4 is also 16. Because remember, when we have an even exponent, then a negative will become positive. Okay, so this is something you only have to worry about when you've got an even exponent. So just take a note, make note of that. So when you've got an even exponent, the base is positive or negative. Okay, again, you don't have to worry about that in the other kind because we knew what the base was supposed to be. They told us what the base was supposed to be, but here they haven't. We are having to find out what the base is ourselves. Okay, so it could be positive or negative 2. Please take note that I put that in brackets with the 4 exponent outside because if it's not in brackets, that 4, that exponent, will not be applied to the, the plus or the minus. It has to be inside the brackets. Okay, so please remember that. So once I've done that, I can now do basically the same thing as I did in the other type, except now, instead of dropping the bases, I'm going to drop the exponents. So what I was doing over here is I was making the exponents the same. And now what I'm going to do is because the exponents are the same, I can now drop the bases. I, mean, I can drop the exponents and make the bases e equal to each other. So now I can say, therefore, x minus 5, that base, I can take it out of the brackets now because I don't have the exponent anymore. x minus 5 is equal to positive or negative 2. Okay. So now that is what I've done over here. I can drop my exponents. and I can make the bases equal to each other. Once I've got that, I can now go and solve the equation. But because I've got this plus and minus, I need to take both of them into account. So I'm going to be getting two answers to this, uh, to this equation, two solutions. So what I'm going to do is I need to take this 5, like I would always do, across, and I'm going to have x equals, I can write it as plus minus 2, positive or negative 2, plus 5, because I'm adding 5 on both sides, or I can put the 5 on the um, left-hand side of the plus minus 2, just so it looks a little bit easier and it's better and it's a little bit easier to work with. So I'm going to put the 5 over there, plus or minus 2, but it would be the same if I wrote it like this, plus or minus 2, plus 5. It's just a little bit more complicated to actually think through that way. So over here, I've got 5 plus or minus 2. So now we can get our answer by doing this. Now I can say, therefore, x is equal to, now, if I have 5 plus 2, what do I get? 5 plus 2 is 7. Or I have another answer, x equals 5 minus 2, which is 3. Now we can go and check both of those, okay? So if I check both, if x is 7, let's see what I get. 7 minus 5 is 2. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. 16 minus 7 is 9. So that works. So if I have 7, then it works. Let's check what happens when I have 3. 
If x is 3, then I have x 3 minus 5, which is negative 2. Negative 2 to the power of 4 is 16. 16 minus 7 is 9. So both of these answers will work. Okay, and so we have to give both of them. We can't just give one, we have to give both. Okay, so that is what we get for that example. Now we're going to go through a few. These ones I'm just going to go through quickly with you, all of them. Okay, so the first one, question A, we have got x squared equals 3 squared. Okay, so this one has already been given to you where you've got a power equal to a power, the exponents are the same, so we can drop the exponents and we can make the bases equal to each other and that gives us x equals 3. So for question three, for question A, x squared equals 3 squared, I, they already have the same exponents, I drop the exponents and I can make the bases equal to each other. Question B, it looks similar to the previous one, I'm also starting with x squared equal to, this time I've got negative 3 squared. Okay, now I want you to take note over here. I had to put the plus or minus in when I was having to change a number to a power which had an even exponent. Here, this has an even exponent, but I was told what the base was. So I'm not putting a plus or minus here. This time, I've been told what the base is. I don't have to put a plus or minus, but they've told me that this base is negative. If I were to multiply this out, 3 squared would give me 9, and negative 3 squared would also give me 9. So both of these would look the same if I was given it like this. If I was given it like that, I would have had to do this, but I'd have to put the plus or minus in. But because I was not given it like this, because I was given it already as a power with a base where they told me what the base is, I don't need to worry about the plus or minus. Okay. So over here, I've been told x squared equals negative 3 squared. So I can go straight ahead and I can say I already have a power equal to a power. I can, with the same exponents, I can drop the exponents and make the bases equal to each other. So therefore, x is equal to negative 3. Okay, so let's have a look at how that is different to question C that we're going to have over here. Question C we've got x squared equals negative 3 squared. Now, if you look at this over here, they look very similar, but there is a crucial difference, and that is these brackets. The brackets over here are telling me that the square is being applied to the negative as well as the 3. It's the, the negative 3 is being squared. But over here, because there are no brackets, it is only the 3 that is being squared. So if I were to write this out, if I were to multiply it out, it would look like this. x squared equals negative 9. That is very different to that. In, in, the, in terms of the fact that you can't have a square number giving a negative result. Because remember, if you have a negative number being squared, it'll always be positive. And if you have a positive number being squared, it'll always be positive. So you're never going to get a negative answer when you square something. So there is no real solution. This is actually, x would be an imaginary number in this one. It's a non-real or imaginary number. So in this case, we can say there is no real solution. This will happen anytime you have an even exponent. So x is to the power of an even number equal to a negative number because you cannot have a power which has an even exponent equal to a negative number because anytime you have an even exponent it will always result in a positive answer so this is not going to work not with real numbers with imaginary numbers yes but not with real numbers so there is no real solution for this equation question d here we've got x squared equals 9. Okay, now this one is very similar to what I had in questions A and question B. But here I haven't been given it already in exponential form. I have not been given it as a power. I have to change it to a power myself, which means I have to take into account, just like I had to in the example I gave you, I have to take into account every single possible base that will give me 9 after it has been squared. So if I want to make a base on both sides that has the same exponent of 2, then I have to say, well, 
yes, 3 squared is equal to 9, but negative 3 squared is also equal to 9, which means I have to take both of those into account. Okay, so once I've got that, I can say, now I've got the same exponents, I can drop the exponents and make the bases equal to each other, so therefore, x is equal to positive or negative 3. Now, in the previous example that I gave you over here, where I had plus and minus, I then had to go and do more simplification and more solving. Here, I don't need to do that. So in this case over here, I can just leave my answer as x equals plus minus 3. I don't need to write 3 or negative 3. I can just leave it like that. Okay, question D. Or question E, rather. I've got x squared equals negative 9. Okay, very similar to what I had over there. But this one is going to be exactly the same problem as what I have over here. I cannot have something that is squared or something that has an even exponent equal to a negative number. It's never going to work. So this is also no real solution. Okay, so all of these ones we've had so far, questions A to E, are all they all look very similar to each other. They all have x squared, they all are 3 squared or 9, or negative 9, okay, or negative 3 squared. But based on where the negative is, if it's in brackets or not, also based on if I've been given it in exponential form or if I've been given it as 9, then the way I have to deal with it is going to be slightly different. So please take note of how all of those work and the differences between them. Now let's have a look at question F, which is like this over here. I've got negative x squared equal to negative 9. See how this one is different to this one. Here I've got x squared equal to a negative number, but this one is actually going to work because they are negative on both sides of the equation. Now, if I had negative x equal to 9, what would I, or neg equals negative 9, what would I do? I would want to get x on its own by dividing both sides by negative 1. And if I divide both sides by negative 1, this is going to happen. I have negative x divided by negative 1 is x equals negative 9 divided by negative 1 is 9. So when I do that, both sides are going to turn positive. So over here, because there is a negative on both sides, it is actually going to work. So what I'm going to do that same thing as what I did over there. I'm just going to do it to my x squared and my negative 9 over here. So I've got negative x squared divided by negative 1. You don't have to show this. I'm just showing it so that you can see what I'm doing. So for this time, I would recommend you write it down. So negative 9 divided by negative 1. So now, when you, whenever you divide by a negative, it makes it positive. And then dividing by 1 doesn't make any difference. Okay, So that's going to give you x squared equals 9. Now, once you've got x squared equals 9, it's exactly the same as what we had over there. So that's going to be x squared equals positive or negative 3 squared. So therefore, x is equal to positive or negative 3. Okay, so that is what happens. If you've got a negative on both sides, then you don't have to worry about what was happening over here, giving you no real solution. If you've got a negative on both sides, you can cancel the negative by dividing by negative 1 on both sides or multiplying by negative 1 on both sides. It also works. Okay, so that's what we do for question F. Now let's have a look at question G. Okay, so for question G, Here I've got x cubed equals 8. Okay, so now when you've got a cube like this, it's going to behave differently to squares. Because for cubes, if you have a positive cubed, it'll stay positive. And you have a, if you have a negative cubed, it will stay negative. Because a cube is an, is an odd exponent. So for any odd exponent, you don't have to worry about the plus or minus. You're going to keep the sign that is already there. So if it's x cubed, I want to know what can I cube to get 8. So x cubed is equal to 2 cubed. So now I've got the same exponent. I can drop the bases. See, I didn't have to put a plus or minus because this is an odd exponent. Okay, so then I can say, therefore, x is equal to 2. And then for h, it's very similar 
Here I've got x cubed equals negative 8. Okay, same thing, just here it was positive, here it's negative. As soon as I've got a negative 8, I have to have a negative base. Okay, so this is, has to be negative 2 cubed. Once I've got a negative base cubed equal to x cubed, I can then drop those cubed, uh, the same exponents. That gives me x equals negative 2. Okay, so when you've got an odd exponent, you use the sign that is already here. If you've got an even exponent, you have to be careful with the plus or minus. Okay, now you're going to go and do some slightly more complicated ones using the concepts that we have learned up until this point to solve these equations. Okay, so for question A in the new practice activity, you're going to have you're going to solve this equation and I'm going to give you one minute to do it. Okay, so let's see how you did with that example. So for question A, we've got x squared plus 5 equals 21. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of any terms that do not have x's in them on the left-hand side. So I'm going to have x squared equals 21 minus 5. That gives me x squared equals 16. Once I've got that, I can then go and see if I can make 16 something to the power of 2. I want my exponent to be 2. So 16 is the same as 4 to the power of 2. But it's not only 4 to the power of 2. I can say x squared is equal to plus or minus 4 to the power of 2. Remember, any time you've got an even exponent, you have to put in the plus or minus here. Okay, once I've done that, I can then drop the exponents because they're now the same, and I can make the bases equal to each other. So I can say, therefore, x is equal to plus or minus 4. There's nothing else that I need to do to solve uh, this equation. There's no nothing I need to move around or anything like that. So I'm done with question A. Right, let's go on to question B. Okay, I'm going to give you one minute again to solve this equation. Okay, so let's see how that went. So in question B, we have got 3x plus 7 in brackets cubed equal to 125. So the first thing I need to do is see, is there anything that I need to move? In this example, there isn't. I've got one power on the left equal to one term on the right. There is nothing that I can move around here. So what I'm going to do now is see, can I make the 125 something to the power of Three. Yes, I can. 125 is 5 cubed. Okay, so this is 3 to the power of, or 3x plus 7 to the power of 3 equals 5 cubed. 
Now, I don't need to put a plus or minus here because it's an odd exponent. I only put the plus or minus if it's an even exponent. So in this case, I don't need to do it. Now that I've got the same exponents, I can drop the exponents and I can make the bases equal to each other. So I can say, therefore, 3x plus 7 must be equal to 5. And now I can solve for x. So I'm going to get rid of the, the 7 over here by minusing on both sides. So I've got 3x equals 5 minus 7. That gives me 3x equals 5 minus 7 is negative 2. So therefore, x is equal to negative 2 over 3 because I'm going to divide by 3 on both sides. Now, I can't simplify that. So that is how it's going to stay. Right, next question. Question C. For question C, you're going to have to do something different to get the x squared on its own. So be careful about that. You're going to have one minute to work on this question again. Okay, so question C, let's see how you did with that question. We've got 5x squared equal to 20. So now I don't have any terms that I need to move around. I'm going to have 5x squared plus something or minus something or anything like that. But I can't solve this equation if I keep the 5 with the x squared. So just like if I had 5x equal to 20, I would have to divide both sides by 5. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to divide both sides by 5 so I have just the x squared equal to something. Okay, so when I divide by, by 5, I get x squared equals 20 divided by 5 is 4. Now that I've done that, I can go and I can try and make the base or try and make the 4 the same as the x squared in terms of its exponent. So I need to see, does 4, is 4 the same as something squared? Yes, it is. I can write 4 as 2 squared. But remember, because it's an even exponent, I have to be careful. It's not just 2 squared. It can also be negative 2 squared. So I'm going to put plus or minus 2 in brackets squared. So now I can say, therefore, because I have the same exponents, I can drop them and I can just make the bases equal to each other. X is equal to positive or negative 2. And I don't have to do anything else now because there's nothing to move around or anything. So it's just X equals plus or minus 2. Okay, so that was question C. Next one is question D. Now this one is more complicated. It's going to take you a bit longer. So I'm going to give you two minutes to solve this equation.
Okay, so let's see how that question went. So here we had 5x minus 4 in brackets squared plus 8 equals 44. The very first thing we need to do for this question is we need to get rid of this 8. Okay, over here, this is one power. I'm not going to worry about moving anything around there. I will do that once I've got rid of my exponents. But for now, I need to get rid of this plus 8. So I'm going to take the plus 8, subtract on both sides. That gives me 5x minus 4 squared equals 44 minus 8. So now I can say that 5x minus 4 squared is equal to 44 minus 8 is 36. Okay. Now that I've got that, I can go and try and make this side a power with the same exponent as that side. Now the exponent over here is 2, it is even, so I am going to have to worry about a plus or minus. Okay, so I've got 5x minus 4 squared equals, 36 is the same as 6 squared, but it is also the same as negative 6 squared. Remember, because it's an even exponent, I have to put in the plus or minus. Now that I've got the same exponents, I can drop them, I can make the bases equal. So I can say, therefore, 5x minus 4 is equal to plus or minus 6. Okay, now this one is more complicated. Once I've got to this stage, I now need to still continue solving. I'm not done, like I was with the other ones that had plus or minus. I need to finish solving this one still. So I'm now going to have two separate mini equations that are going to come off from this. But first I can take this across. So that's going to give me 5x equals negative 4. When I get rid of it, I'm going to plus 4 on both sides. And I'm going to write the 4 in front here so that it's easier to kind of look at and work with. Okay, but if I wrote plus minus 6 plus 4, it would still work. Okay, so now that I've got that, I'm now going to have two separate equations. So now I can say 5x is equal to 4 plus 6, which is 10, or 5x is equal to 4 minus 6, which is negative 2. And I need to solve both of those separately. So 5x equals 10, that gives me x equals 2. I divide by 5 on both sides. Over here, 5x equals negative 2 gives me x equals negative 2. 2 over 5. So I get two answers for the same equation because I had a square which is an even exponent. Okay, so x equals 2 or x equals negative 2 over 5. Okay, that was question D. And then the last one for today is question E. Again, it's a bit more complicated, so I'm going to give you two minutes to solve this equation.
Okay, so let's see how that last question went. So we've got 3 times in brackets 4x plus 6 cubed plus 30 equal to 6. So the very first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this 30 that is over here with that term. So I want to get rid of the 30 by subtracting 30 on both sides. That gives me 3 times 4x plus 6 cubed equals 6 minus 30, which is... 6 minus 30 is negative 24. Okay, so once I've got that, I now need to try and continue. But if you look at the if you look over here, I've got a 3 in front of my brackets. Okay. I need to try and get those brackets on their own. How is this 3 attached? It is attached by multiplication. So I've got 3 multiplied by the brackets to, to the power of 3. So I need to get rid of the 3 by doing the opposite of multiplication or the inverse of multiplication, which is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to get rid of that 3 that I don't want over there. So I've got 4x plus 6 cubed equals, and I'm dividing by 3, so negative 24 divided by 3 will become negative 8. Okay, once I've got that, I can then go and make the negative 8 something cubed. Okay, now 8 is the same as 2 cubed. Negative 8 is the same as negative 2 cubed. Remember, when we've got an odd exponent, I don't have to do the plus or minus. I keep the sign that it already has. But if it's negative, I have to put that in brackets. Otherwise, the negative is separate and it's not being cubed. Okay, and then I wouldn't be able to drop the exponents because I would have something outside of the base. So what I can now do, because I've got the same exponents, I can now drop those exponents and make the bases equal to each other. So I've got 4x plus 6 equals negative 2. And now I can go and solve for x. So I want to get rid of this plus 6. I'm going to take it across, subtract 6 on both sides to get rid of it. 4x equals negative 2 minus 6. That gives me 4x equals negative 8. And now I need to get rid of the 4 by dividing on both sides by 4. So therefore, x is equal to negative 8 divided by 4, which is negative 2. And that's what you should get for question E. And that is how we solve equations with exponents. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.